Hello Builders. Today, let's professionalize your workflows with creating automatic error handling. Whenever one of your NADN workflows will fail, this error handling workflow will start and it will both record what the error was and at which time it, and which exact error and in which location. And also it will send you a message to notify you to, to get to fixing. If you'll find this useful, please drop a like, subscribe for more AI and no-code tips and comment on what you would like to see next. Now you can start uh, error handling just by adding another workflow. But what's important is that the first step, the trigger needs to be a specific one. And if you look for error trigger, that's the one that you need. Workflows that have this trigger can be used as error handling workflows. Let's, uh, let's test this out first. And we get a test event with some information. We can save this. And I would like to do a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I would like to record this error into my own database. And also I would like to send myself a Slack message uh, notifying me of this error that's happening and maybe I need to go into the workflow and fix this, right? So uh, let's start from uh, recording. I will use Google Sheets, append a row in a sheet. Um, first of all, you will need to add credentials to Google Sheets, but please just go on on this channel and see. Uh, I have another video of how to uh, create these credentials. Uh, sheet within documents, append the row. The document will be error log. The sheet will be the first one. And I will have columns, which I can map to whatever the error trigger was. Now for timestamp, uh, I don't have a specific uh, field on my error trigger, but I can write that myself. So just change this into expression and uh, open up double curly brackets. You can select from the from the list now. And since it's you know in a, in a sort of uh, not very legible uh, format, I will enter dot and then format. It's it's actually uh, shown to me. I can leave it at that, or better yet, I would like to know which uh, at which exact time that happened. So uh, space. H H for hours, M M for minutes, and S S for seconds, so that I know that this specific uh, error came at this specific second of the day. For the workflow, I would like to use workflow name. For the URL, that will will be execution URL. For the node, it would be the last node executed. And for the error message will be the error message. Let's test this tab. And if I go to my database, I can see that the time step was added. I can see that the, the name is example workflow because we just did a test workflow. No do the error, example error message, and the URL that won't go anywhere because this is just a test uh, that we're doing. All right. This looks good. Now, uh, only recording an error, you know, gets you so far. I would like to have a notification of an error just for myself as a developer to know when one of my workflows uh, has an error so that I can go in and fix this. So let's use Slack for that. I'm looking for Slack and I would like to send a message. Now, uh, again, uh, please go on on the channel and see how to connect uh, Slack credentials. Resource will be a message. Operation will be send. I will be sending it to the channel, and the channel name will be NADN. And the message will be NADN workflow error. A workflow has encountered an error. Here are the details, date and time. I took the same uh, format as I use for Google Sheets. Workflow name will be workflow name. URL. I just use the error triggers URL, nodes, uh, and error messages. These, uh, all, all of these five um, variables are exactly the same as with uh, Google Sheets. And please review the workflow and if required, resolves the issue ASAP. 
And also one more thing, uh, add an option, include link to workflows and tick that off so that uh, and it then doesn't add attribution to your message to Slack. Let's test the step. And if I go to any then, I can see that uh, it was successful. Any then workflow error, you know, all of the details, the exact time, a name, and, you know, all of the message with the URL, with everything. Let's save this. And let's use this in a real workflow. Now, let's take Jarvis as an example. Uh, to add um, an error workflow, uh, you need to click top right, settings, and under error workflow, just select the one that you just created and save. Uh, in order for this to run, this workflow needs to be active. So I will take uh, Telegram and now we'll just run a simple message. So you won't you won't see this happening, but if we go to executions, we see that this is currently running and it should be running and it's succeeded, right? So if we go to our error log, we don't have any new messages in Slack too. But if I go to the editor and take out uh, the model, which means that this, uh, this is now not working, and the assistant is now not working, and I save this, and I run this again. I can see that it got an error. If I go to the error uh, workflow and go to executions, I can see that it succeeded. And if I go to the error log, I see that we have a problem. A chat model subnode must be connected and enabled. And we have a link. And if we go to that link, we go straight to our execution where the problem happens so that she can debug this. And if I go to Slack, I see there's a new message just now. A new workflow has encountered an error, an error, a date and time, workflow name. I can click on the link and go straight to the execution and also what kind of an error that was and please review the workflow and if required, solve the issue ASAP. If you like this, click on the screen to go to my latest video.